Hey everybody, welcome back to more Lost Odyssey, where last time we went through the city of Ura and got all, most of the side quests done there. I mean, there's a couple things here and there, but nothing really too grand. This time around, we're actually going to go into Gongora's secret cave that was locked by a royal seal, which begs the question, how did he get in here to begin with? I mean, technically, maybe Tolan helped him, but I kind of doubt that because not even Tolan really knew about them that well. But yeah, you see all these empty chests here. It's kind of sad, but... They don't have anything in them. But there are some things that we can get around here. If we look around, there is a ladder right here with a pot. So let's go down here first. And then grab this. All right, virus bomb, moving on. Straight up and there we go. And over to this way. Looks like we got a good chance. All right, getting into a battle here. These things, they're obnoxious. They also can cause confusion as well as petrify. So if we have anything that kind of gets around that, that's nice, but I don't think it really do at the moment. So I think the best solution is just kind of kill them. <laughs> so we could just do that. And, uh, just, again, kill them. They are mechanical nuns, so it doesn't really matter what I use at this point. Kind of just whack on them, and, uh, there we go. Yeah. All damage is good damage when it comes to these things. But this is pretty much the fight up here. It's just these stupid things. So I'm probably not going to run for any of these battles, I'm probably just going to do them because of the potential level of gains, and I would love to get my other party members kind of equaled out with how much I'm going to be leveling up here. There we go, that's a lot of GC down. Confused and still does casting support. Totally fine with that. All right, we got one left over here and the GC's low enough to where I can just kind of attack these things in the back. No real issues. Kind of just go for it and then have you kind of finish that one off. These enemies we just fought, the experiment number 42s, ironically enough, if you're under level 42, you might have some problems fighting these things. But they are definitely great to be hitting that level and beyond, because you level up once for battle, and if you have set on your party, that's double SP, and if you hit level 44 with set, you get double experience. The grinding here is amazing. Yeah, we see a pot right down there. We can't get to just yet, but if we go over here and just kind of turn this, we undo the steam down below, which just kind of allows us to get through to said item. Which then we could just use this ladder right over here. Climb on down. And now that we're down, just go around. No worries, grab item. Perfect, 5000 G. So yeah, this place is good for just kind of getting a little bit higher up in levels. Just kind of slightly worry about the things like that's the only move that they could do is petrify in order to like kill you so if you have anti-petrify going then you're kind of fine i don't even think i even have it set <laughs> i mean i might but i don't even think i do it's not really worth it to look at it but yeah as you can tell we have a elevator here that we can't really use that's that's how gangora got in i think about it because the other elevator goes down here but then we have this wall right up here the upscaling did this wall no favors. <laughs> there we go. You can easily tell that it's breakable. Go inside. Get the third item around here. A seed. Can't really do anything about that yet. We go over here. Turn this. There you go. That's another one down. Go over here. And we have a lever right over here, which unfortunately enough, I get into a battle, so. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. So yes, like I was saying before, go and turn this. And that gives us our fourth item, Groundus Bomb. Yay. But if we go this way, see another ladder. What if, uh, nope, 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 back, go back. Let me take care of this first. There we go. Now go down. Sometimes like this, I wish I could hit the run button on elevators. Or not elevators, well, a ladder again, so technically an elevator, but you know. There we go. Six magic crystals, move on over. Back over here. And climb back up. There we go, and now, as you can tell on the map, we can go right through the door, or we could go left over here. Going through this allows us to get into here. With a magical lock key. Magical lock key, that was a weird scene transition there. Wrong one. Magical lock key. Key needed to battle stronger backyard enemies. Keep that in mind. We're gonna be needing that for later. But not now. For now though, we should probably head into here. <laughs> oh god, I'm just staring intently. Just intensely at the door. That is hilarious. Yeah, the moment we go into here, I'm gonna just make sure. Yeah, I think I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, just go into here. Alright, so this boss here, it's technically not really a boss, it's just a bunch of dolls. Which, they have metal scales on them, so we'll be getting those. This thing has the Backyard Weekly. We kind of want that so we can get further along in the backyard, but as you can tell, we have a guard condition thing to worry about. So if we want to get around that, we can maybe equip some items that allows us to do that. Like in this case, I do two times uh, guard condition damage. As long as it's perfect anyway, so I can just kind of kill some of these things. And then, let's see, you have the Master Ring, which still is useful, so just try to get rid of one of those. Now, with Sarah, on the other hand, the generator. It's basically just blocks all magic stuff, so it's it's kind of annoying. But we can get around it by using Gamble, because this is a random amount of damage on one enemy. It's technically not magic, so we can get around it doing that and get rid of it pretty quickly. Is what the generator is going to do. It's going to generate more dolls. The longer, like, basically, it kind of just gets more of these just spawning, and it's it's obnoxious, but it's pretty much the only way that that's going to happen. So if I want to do more gamble, I'm probably going to see if I can find more spirit magic stuff here. Do I have anything spirit? Yeah, there we go. Equip that, and then wrong one. Spirit magic. Do another gamble so I can start attacking this thing in the background as well. There we go. The dolls themselves are pretty dang easy, and their attacks are nothing to worry about. Just kind of kill them to get rid of GC. Yeah, this is the only problem, is that this thing likes to do status effect things. So yeah, I'm poisoned now. Don't be taking poison damage. But if I do enough damage with Gamble, which I didn't, I'm at least doing some damage at the moment, so it will eventually kind of tick down. Yeah, see? It's gone already. That It's like, okay, all we got left is this thing. It didn't generate more dolls. Easy battle. I'm just gonna hold this. I'm done. Okay. Not yet. Am 
Am I done now? There we go. <laughs> That's all it took. Hey, not bad for a young punk. And there's the backyard weekly as well as four metal scales. I could have got more, but yeah, that's fine. Ooh, I learned slot plus five finally. I can give that to somebody else now. <laughs> All right, now let me actually go and do that. Uh, let's see, this thing. I'm going to equip this one. Yeah, I need to put those back on, but that, that's fine. Because now I can give you slot plus five. All right, I think I fixed it. <laughs> At least decently enough. So let me just kind of go through here and give you those things. There we go. All right, so there's a couple things we can get in here. First off is this. The last of the magic castles for that side quest over in the Grand Staff construction base. As well as three pendulums, nice. And we have a blinking orange dot on the map, right, not up here, right over here. Controller shakies, just kind of grab it. There we go, the Demon King's Horn and the Demon King Ring, that's nice, as well as this trash can. <laughs> there goes the lid. Bye lid, bye lid. And now let me equip that. I believe that was a Jansen thing. Yes it is, Jansen. Dark Staff made for a horn and a giant demon, Jansen only. As well as the Demon King Ring, fire level two, spirit killer level two, and Pew Zorb level two. Those are all nice, but again, your spellcasters don't really need the rings on. I don't even know why you have that on, honestly. Because they don't really attack. You're not going to be attacking with them, so it's just like, whatever. But yeah, if you want a little bit more story here, you can click on this. What could this be? Something on Gongoros, possibly, given that it's hidden in a place like this. She's like, I mean, obviously, it's something on Gongoros. <laughs> Let's check it out. Maybe we can find what he's been up to in this 30 years we've lost. Been sent on a mission. I'm not from this world. However, I've been sent to investigate this world. I have teleported across time and space. My consciousness continued even after I took on a physical form and remains to this day. My whole world and this world, for some reason, the two worlds seem to be linked on the same axis across space and time. Our world was becoming extremely unstable. Reports have begun to circulate that it would collapse. We believe this to be caused by interference from another world. This world, that was on the same axis as ours. Our pure and tarnished world was being warped and distorted by some unknown force, not unlike a virus distorting a living being. Over the course of time, we realized that this virus could well be a soul or spirit. The interference from that other world was from the souls of its inhabitants. They were producing some form of energy that was distorting our world. Why did it have such an influence? To understand the cause of this phenomenon, to study this interference, we established a quantum teleporter, a means to send our consciousness to this other world. And so we came to investigate. Including myself, there are five investigators. The others are Kai Barganar, Seth Balmar, Ming Namara, and Sarah Siswart. We arrived here without memories of our home world, and now live among the native inhabitants of this world while we carry out our mission. A thousand years was chosen as a time frame sufficient to develop a deep understanding of this world's inhabitants. The way we arrived, with our memories locked away, has allowed us to become like the people we now live among. However, I awoke to the memory of this mission some days ago. I am leaving this recording so that this world may know that I existed. Given that time flows differently on the two worlds, we shall appear to neither age nor die on this world. The thousand years of our investigation is equivalent to the passing of only a single year on our own world. With the difference in the flow of time, we live much longer lives than those around us. By immersing ourselves in the history, culture, thoughts, and habits of this world, we succeeded in gathering detailed data. We will transmit our experiences to our home world, in the hopes that it will give us the means of saving it. An unexpected result of our mission is that the Tower of Mirrors is causing a variety of odd changes in the natural order of this world. Wild animals run amok, and there are many sightings of monstrous creatures. The natural magic energy of this world has changed. This may in fact be a blessing. Magic energy has dramatically improved the lives of these people. When our 
consciousness was reconstituted within our new bodies, there was a resonance with the magic energy. The possibility that our existence has imparted even greater strength to this world's magic energy is very likely. We have seen much in our thousand years here, which brings us to the true nature of the virus. The lives and history of the people here are extremely ordinary, and we have seen many dynasties rise to power and fall again into oblivion, as if they were nothing but trivial occurrences. And yet the existence of the virus on our world shows that the events of this world had a tremendous impact, making a history that will never be recorded in any book here. Their feelings that dominate the minds of the people of this world, their hopes and desires, their love and their hatred, their very lives and deaths, the events that bring fear or happiness to their every moment, all of these resulted in massive waves of something that interfered with our own world. The hearts and minds of the people is what moves this world. At certain times, this was evident by the feelings of affection toward others. At other times, it was shown by the unrestrained drive to satisfy a great ambition. In the time we have lived among the people of this world, we have realized that these feelings, previously unknown to us, profoundly affect them. And the effects of these feelings are causing the massive energy waves that are affecting our own world. From our standpoint, these feelings are simply a virus. But in the course of a thousand years, we have found them to be a very seductive virus. While here in this world, I have been infected by the virus of feeling and have consequently attained powerful magic energy. To abandon this would be grievous and painful. To even think this way shows how deeply the virus has infected me. But the virus's seduction has been quite satisfying. And it still is. A virus that works on people's emotions. I never thought about it that way. But you may be right, in a way. Angora did that. Come on, don't let him pull the wool over your eyes. He's going to use that to take over the world. I know, I know. I'm not about to let Angora abuse everything I hold dear for his own cruel ambitions. So they're basically saying that, hey, people having emotions is affecting everybody in the other world which yeah but at the same time okay <laughs> i mean so how do you go about combating that then all right so we're pretty much done in this cave aside from the fact that i want to level up i can level up at least to maybe level 50 easily here no big deal only things i gotta worry about are petrify and dizzy as long as i can combat both those problems this area is insanely great for leveling up so I'm going to take the time to equal out my characters because there is a giant level disparity against my other characters I'm not using. So let me take care of that really quick. And we'll leave this area via the elevator that just opened up for us defeating that boss. All right, so here we are after my battles. It kind of took me a little bit because I took a little break, but the skills that we learned are amazing. So with Jansen, we kind of went and learned his drain shower in order to catch him up, but we also learned level seven and level eight black magic. So that's nice. That's really good, but that's not where we're stopping with that because Cook also learned some good stuff. Reduce casting time level two. It doesn't stack with reduce casting time one, unfortunately, but it's still enough to make composite magic level two pass on the same turn, which is great. Still doesn't really help Prisma though. <laughs> Either way, we have level seven and level eight black magic as well that we learned amazing stuff. And with Mac, we've actually learned stand firm, three combo and Walla, as well as spirit magic level seven and level eight. We learned a lot with him because he was actually kind of low. He wasn't anywhere near the other party members. 
And then we have... And then we have Tolan. We learned to complete the fence. Huge MP gifts, which transfers a lot of users' MP to another party member. Complete defense and nullifies all damage for a while. Great. Oh yeah, we also learned royal equipment, which allows the uh, royal equipment to be equipped by the immortals. This is only really good for I'm and Seth. The other two, not so much. Maybe just the accessories that we get. Oh yeah, those are really, really nice. And last but not least, said. Said we've learned special accessory, which allows us to equip special accessories. Three accessories, which allows us to equip three accessories and double experience. Yeah, everybody now only needs one more skill, and that's at round level 52 for most characters, aside from Toen. Toen, you have to get it another way. So pretty much that's all the skills that we can learn from all the characters. Now everybody can just learn whatever. It's great. Time's level 50 because of he was in the party the whole time, so he eventually leveled up. It took him a while. But yeah, that's pretty much all the stuff that we got here. It went pretty dang quickly. Not gonna lie, it, it's definitely worth the time to do. So let's get out of here. But we're not done in Ura just yet. There's actually another dream we can get here. There were three DLCs that this game had. One of them was a pre-order bonus, which I've mentioned before. That's how I got the Sammy the Storyteller dream, as well as the Weapon Guard level 2 skill from the Master Secret script. But there was also two more. There was the triple bonus pack, which gave you another dream trigger called an old soldier's legacy. You only can get this on disc four. That's what we're going to be heading towards now. That's also what gave us the killer machine, as well as the memory lamp that allows us to rewatch cutscenes. But there's one more DLC called The Secret of the Deep. We actually don't have access to this yet. I will be going into that when we're able to. So for now, let's get this last dream trigger. If we head back to the Royal Palace and go through the castle station, we end back up in that area of all the rubble. But first, we gotta go through the Station Square, of course. I forgot this area existed because uh, it's called Station Square and that's related to another series entirely. In the area outside the front gates, you'll see two people standing right over here. If you go up to them... Look, you see that hole? That was made by a Goatson tank. My cousin was seriously wounded by that Goatson attack. I'll make them pay for this. That unlocks a memory deep within Kaim's heart. This is a DLC dream, and you get it on disc four, like I mentioned. So it'll be down below in the description and it'll be in the car on the top right. And that's it for Aura for now. There's not much left to do in the city, but we have a couple side quests to turn in. Not much, mind you, but we might as well get them done while we're at it. So back at the Grand Staff Construction Base, if we head back into the resting room and go through here, we could turn in those magic capsules that he wanted. There we go. Yes, completion is in sight. My most sincere thanks for your part in my greatest research project. Here's your reward. Take it. That gives us six ceremonial crystals. I must now begin the experiment immediately. Farewell for now. Which allows us to make the Enchanted Ring. The Enchanted Ring is a Spirit Ring. Yeah, there's Spirit Killer Level 2. We just need one Spirit Killer Level 1 Ring, and then we can make the Enchanted Ring. That's about it. Nothing too fancy there. The side quest itself isn't too spectacular, unfortunately. And while we do have one more side quest to turn in there, we can't quite do that just yet. But if we head back to Gota City, I believe it's the East Entrance. Yeah, see, centers. Okay. Just making sure. I always forget. <laughs> so, yeah, we just head right back over here and we could turn in that broken Ken sword. There you go. This is the sword my friend brought with him to Wall. You actually found this for me. That one specific sword. We just happened to find the one that you were looking for. Listen, Immortal, you killed my friends in the Wall Highlands. You ought to be my sworn enemy by normal standards. But we, the Kens, value friendship above all else, and I owe you a great debt for helping me commemorate my friends. So please, take this. We get the happy flower. The happy flower... ...is somewhere on here. There it is. Crisis prayer. Automatically recovers HP during critical HP status. Doesn't take much to learn. Might as well learn it. And that is pretty much most, if not all, the side quests we can do for now. 
There are a couple more here and there, but they're not really worth the effort to go to just yet, mainly because there's some stuff we haven't done yet. So next, we're going to head to the Eastern Port of Salmon here, because our next destination is the other blinking dot in the bottom right. Yeah, we're actually going to progress the story finally. So next time on Azure Plays, more Lost Odyssey. We're going to head to that blinking dot. I'll see you all then.